Inquisitor? The Arcanist has arrived. You should see for yourself. Slack John. Let's figure out what you need. Hey, look, she's a little tiny dwarf. I guess it makes sense if she's the ar if she's a rune crafter, then she's probably a dwarf. Because aren't they all basically? All right. Hello, Dagna. You're the magical advisor. Oh, you're him, the Inquisitor. I'm Dagna, Arcanist Dagna. It's an honor, Your Worship. Is that it? The hand anchor mark. It's pretty. Mm, Reach was pretty too. In a destroy everything sort of way. <laughs> I welcome you to the Inquisition and look forward to your contribution. Me too. I've heard some impossible things. I love impossible things. Those are the best to make, well, possible. I've looked at Herod's devices. Precision is fantastic, but typical, mundane, old thinking. Is it now? No disrespect meant to the classical trades, but. You need a new perspective. I've made adjustments. As long as I keep making them, you can craft just about anything. Almost safely. Where does a dwarf go to study magical theory? Get out. I asked myself that question for years. Turns out, not in Orzammar. I had to start at a circle. I had to fight to do it. Everyone said I couldn't. Everyone. I swept floors and libraries, traded rooms for tomes. I met outsiders like me, new thinkers. If there's something to know about magic, I'll find it. There's no barriers to what magic can do, Inquisitor, no matter what they say. You were quick to join the Inquisition. Is there something you want? How could I waste a chance to get close to you? And Corythius? My goodness! And actual physical rifts in the veil? Also, dwarves? We don't dream. So, when mages talk about it, I can only... Well, dream what it would be like. So there's that, and all the things you'll probably find, and what I'll get to make. The rules are different here. Plus, you're paying me a lot. Like, wow, so much. <laughs> what qualifies you to be an arcanist? I took the title because I'm a magical researcher, philosopher, and master of practical application. And I like it. I can't actually do magic because I'm a dwarf, but that also means no risk of possession. Safer than a mage. It means that every skill I have, I've learned through reason and understanding. Coming from the Smith cast, I know the value of mastering craft. Did you know dwarves invented enchanting? <laughs> Probably. What is it you do exactly? I was born to the forge. That's literal in the Smith cast. So the hammer and tong, that's like a heartbeat. But You've a man for that already, and a good one. I'm here because of my passion for magic. Magical study, magical theory, magical enchantment, and through it, the manipulation of masterworks. I studied it all with an objective eye. No secrets, no fears. That lets me apply principles like no other. Maybe one other, but I don't have that wonky of a mind, so I still kind of win. What's the story with enchanting? Lyria is the heart. In certain rational patterns, it beats like something alive. That's how I see it. So, a mage can make your weapons do things, but with the right runes, the right rarities, your toys become wonders. It's the one thing mages can't do. It drives them mad. Literally. Dwarves are resistant, so it doesn't affect us. Mostly. You have the ability to make exceptional weapons and armor. Masterworks. There's an art to the forge, as well as enchanting. You need an ear for it. And hands. Eyes, too. Nothing bad to say about Herod on that front. He's, he's wonderful. 
but there's this little more needed. With the right bits, an edge can be more than an edge. Armor can do more than protect. A hue can be just a bit brighter. In short, smithing can be... more. <laughs> In short. <laughs> Another time, Dagna. Of course. Bring me what you want made, and I'll make sure it goes just right. Alrighty, let's take a look then. Where's Dagnus? It's gotta be this little... Ooh. So is this, is this weird... Is this weird helm thing? This weird head surrounded by weird claws? Is that new or was that always here? I wonder. Let's see. There's gotta be a quest for this, right? So, inner circle... Uh, amulet locations? No. Is there a specific thing for the... Uh, character we just recruited? Not necessarily. Where's the location then? Skyhold. Greener Garden, Sniper Tower, Advanced Crafting. So I can have Herrick create a Masterwork, and I can create a Rune in the Undercroft. Okay. So let's, let's, let's discuss with Herrick what he can do then. Oh. Special Shipments. Staff of Adaman, Allied Blade of Tuna, Sword of Cheris. What in the hell were those? I don't really know what to make of that. Okay, so let's take a look at, uh, if I do have, do I have special types of armor listed? Helmet, light armor, heavy armor. What is a masterwork, exactly? The category is still called Tier 1, 2, 3. Create a masterwork. Oh, masterwork wave blade, masterwork inscribed axe. I guess that's what they mean, then. Oh, this has its own little weird little spot. So I can make, I can make a, let's see, so what's the difference here? I already had a weapon that could be 169 damage. Let's go, is it specifically, let's go one-handed weapons. Let's go to specifically things that could be used by Vasti. So I could create a Masterwork Wave Blade. So let's see what this extra slot does here. Let's see. This top thing's what's gonna make it different, otherwise it's just the same thing that my previous character had. So 40% chance of Masterwork. 100% chance of Masterwork. Ability, increase maximum stamina by 10. He- oh, okay, so these are all the special abilities you see on some weapons, especially unique weapons. And now, I can make them put, be applied to anything. So, ability, heal 50% damage take, taken uh, into over 10 seconds. T 15 max stamina, 3 guard on hit, 2 guard on hit. Heal 20% damage, okay, th there's a lot of different effects I can look at here. So, 10% chance to grant Three seconds of walking fortress. That's a temporary invincibility. I believe and I think it means 10 is it 10% when I hit or 10% when they hit me I believe it's when I hit so that'd be crazy to have on my tank a 10% chance of three seconds of walking for fortress That means I'd be I'd be invincible really frequently Heal 20% damage taken. There's a lot of things here 22% chance of using shield bash on hit so like I just shield bash someone because they hit me Oh, Berserk. 10% chance as the ability Berserk. 10% damage bonus, 100% damage from all sources. 20% uh, damage bonus plus 200% damage from all sources. I need, I'll have to look into what Berserk is, though. I don't necessarily remember. And then there's also the chance of Masterwork. I'll have to, re I'll have to research what that means exactly. Because uh, yeah, it's this critical crafting chance, 40%. Uh, masterwork chance... Oh, there we go. It says right there. Never mind. 10% plus 10% to stats on success. So it means I have a 40% chance of creating a masterwork weapon. And if it does that, I get 10% a 10% bonus to all stats. That's devastating in its own right. The ability to have 10% of everything. I also have the essence of perfection, which would guarantee that. The question is, do I want to? Would I want to invest in that? Because I don't know how common essence of perfection is. All right, here's the fun little item I crafted with my uh, opportunity here. It's not that different from the weapon Cole already had, but I figured, hey, Cole's going down all the time. He's a squishy little rogue, and he takes damage when he shouldn't, but and, and he goes down. So I gave him a power he's never had before. I gave him on hit, gain three guard, and that's that's that might change the dynamic entirely. Suddenly, I'm gonna have a rogue that's generating guard when he attacks. That's a pretty interesting mechanic right there. So his Cole's. I had, to, I had to, it was a little expensive, I had to craft a new bow that was just as scary as Cole's original bow. I've avoided using anything called dragons so far. I have some, I have some dragon crafting materials and I'm not using them yet because I want to save them for when I'm sure I want to use them, like maybe later in the game, because I don't want to blow them and not be able to get more back, but yeah. 
certain stats here could have been a little higher if I used dragon materials, but I don't want to blow my load and get those uh, out of the way too early. But hey, we'll see in this next, because uh, we're about to do the story mission, I think. Let's see if uh, Cole's guard generation turns out to be an awesome thing or not. So right here we have a Mitra vein, which I planted before. And we have Royal Elf Root. And the roots are still there. So I, does that mean that's going to keep growing over and over again, or do I need to plant a new seed? I don't know, but I'll be sure to come back periodically and check in again to see if that stuff comes back. Alrighty, I believe the time has finally come to commit to Wicked Eyes and Wicked Hawks, so the next story mission. Yeah, especially since I've already, unfortunately, outleveled it. That's what I get for trying to space things out and pace myself and play the game the way, uh, frankly, a lot of RPG players would. It's too bad they don't scale a little more. I think that, uh, maybe it's just me, but I think RPGs, like, it's, I, I'm okay with having a re level requirement to enter something to sort of gate progress and give you an, a reason to explore and, and, uh, do side content and everything, but I think there shouldn't be level caps. I think everything should just scale up forever. No further trouble with the undead. After what happened, it will take time for the village to recover. Frankly, I think stuff scaling up infinitely is probably the best way to handle things for the player experience. It's actually something I like quite a bit about, uh... Something I like about, uh, Guild Wars 2 is actually the fact that... If leveling up in that game feels good, and you never feel like you're missing anything, because... Your character actually scales down to the level... Your character, when you enter a low-level area, you actually scale down to that level, which is basically the... It's functionally the same thing as having the area scale up to match you. Uh, so what that means is that every time you feel you level up in that game, you're just unlocking more content. You're never gating away previous content and uh, because nothing becomes suddenly worthless. You can play anywhere you want, and leveling up just unlocks more content but never loses any. And that's cool. And I wish more games worked that way. It's one of my favorite things about the... Uh, Bethesda's RPGs, which I frankly otherwise don't really, I'm not super into in general. I love their level scaling things that a lot of games don't, unfortunately. But anyway, Wicked Hearts and Wicked, uh, Wicked Eyes and Wicked Hearts, the next stage of the Inquis Inquisitor's pl uh, path since we previously went with Hawk and uh, ended up fighting the nightmares and going directly into the Fade. So, an assassin is stalking the Empress. Selene's death would plunge or lay into chaos, leaving it an easy target for Corypheus. At the Winter Palace of, of Halam Sheral, Selene is holding peace talks with her rebellious cousin Grand Duke Gaspard under the guise of Grand Ball. Of a Grand Ball, sorry. Every noble in the Empire will attend, making it the perfect place in time for Corypheus' assassin to strike. We can arrange an invitation to attend to keep him from destroying Rolay if we hurry. Yes, if we hurry, because I've been in such a hurry. Ignoring it for like the last 35 episodes. <laughs> uh, what I'm curious about is that we know about... Empress Selene's assassination, because I play, because I helped the mages, and so I was there with Cole, and we experienced the future, because we were accidentally sent to the future, and when we were sent there, uh, we discovered that Selene's death was just an event that happened already, so that, that's why we know about it, is because it happened, so now we can go back to prevent it, because it's a time travel storyline, but... If you help the Templars, that doesn't happen. In fact, I, I did I did a four-episode side quest thing, not my little non-canon series where I helped the Templars, and they said I, I don't think they mentioned anything about Selene's death. So I'm curious if you help the Templars, how exactly this topic is brought up. I genuinely don't know. But anyway, let's get started. We have to reach the Empress before Corypheus. The only question is, how? We know how. I have our way in. The real question is, where is our enemy hiding? At the urging of Grand Duchess Florian, the Empress is holding a ball. Absolutely everyone will be there. During the festivities, Celine will be meeting for peace talks with the usurper Duke Gaspard and Ambassador Briala. The assassin must be hiding within one of these factions. What do we know about Duke Gaspard? The man who would have been Emperor. He's Celine's cousin and was first in line to inherit the throne when Emperor Florian died. Selene outmaneuvered him. She won over the Council of Heralds, who hold authority over title disputes. She became Empress, and he a general in the Imperial Army. He's well-loved by the troops. He's also a Chevalier. Most of their number sided with him when he turned on the Empress. Aren't the Chevaliers part of the army? Why would they follow the Duke? 
Most chevaliers are sworn to serve the crown, but that does not give them faith in the person wearing it. The Empress has tried to improve relations with Ferelden and Navarra. The chevaliers see her as anti-military. They believe Gaspard could lead the Empire back to the glory of Draken's expansion years. Who is this Ambassador Briala? An ambassador in name only. She has organized the elves of Halam Sheral into an underground army. The Empress invited her to the peace talks in a bid to gain the elves' alliance in the war. That would be scandal enough, without the rumor that Briala is a jilted lover of Selene's. A personal grudge and a network of sabotage at her command. <laughs> Promising lead. Wait. The elven leader is a jilted lover of the Empress. It's not widely known. Just a rumor whispered among the palace servants a few years ago. If it's true and where to get out. The Empress and an elf. <laughs> the scandal could destroy Celine's court. Even if a lie, Briella could use it to blackmail the Empress. She has some connection to the throne. Tell me everything we know about the Empress. Empress Celine is a renowned diplomat and reformer. She works tirelessly to secure peace for the Empire. Unfortunately, many Orlesians view peace as complacency. She has yet to name an heir, leaving the future of the Empire in doubt if anything happens to her. Especially when the next in line is her cousin Gaspard, who's made few friends on the Council of Heralds. Selene is surrounded at all times by countless guards, courtiers, servants, and vassals. What better place for an assassin to hide than the Empress's own household? How can Gaspard still be next in line while he wages war against his Empress? The title Grand Duke indicates that he was a prince before the Empress took the throne. Do we need to go to the peace talks? The Empress must have personal guards. We could just warn her she's in danger. We've made the attempt, but... It seems that our messages never reached her. Someone intercepted them. It's better that we don't leave this to chance. If Orlais falls to Corypheus, no land is safe. We shouldn't waste any time. Let's go to the Winter Palace. So here comes the operation. I, sorry, I was, there was a moment of silence because I was glancing through all of that information trying to see if it was the same thing. And it is, it's the same text I already read, so that's fine. Uh, so we have a... We have an Empress who's surrounded by people who is the current leader and... Unfortunately, we can't reach her directly because she's surrounded by people who and some of those people the, every, Everything every message goes through someone before it gets to her and unfortunately one of those people that has that kind of access is Intentionally blocking us probably because they're involved in the assassination attempt that's coming up We have someone who is in direct conflict and is going to be probably just a general problem And he's also in line for the throne and that's not a great it's like we have a power we have a power grabby a uh, hostile type, and we also have a potential scorned lover to deal with from a- that's also a, a, a foreign power, so a lot of tight ropes to walk here. The political situation in Halam Shiral hangs by a thread. The Empress fears our presence could sever it. The Grand Duke is only too happy to have us at the ball as his guests, so our invitation comes from him. Whether we act as his allies, or upset the balance of power, he gains an opportunity, if not a clear advantage. Inquisitor Adar, it is my great pleasure to meet you. The rumors coming out of the Western Approach say you battled an army of demons. Imagine what the Inquisition could accomplish with the full support of the rightful Emperor of Orlais. Exactly what would be required to get that Imperial support? I am not a man who forgets his friends, Inquisitor. You help me, I'll help you. Prepared to shock the Assembly by appearing as the guest of a hateful usurper, my lord? They will be telling stories of this into the next age. I can't imagine that crowd has seen anything better than us in their entire lives. I knew we would get along famously, Inquisitor. As a friend, perhaps there is a matter you could undertake this evening. This elven woman, Briala, 
I suspect that she intends to disrupt the negotiations. My people have found these ambassadors all over the fortifications. Sabotage seems the least of their crimes. Tell me there's more to your suspicion than the elves were acting dodgy. That ambassador, Briala, used to be a servant of Selene's. That is, until my cousin had her arrested for crimes against the Empire to cover up a political mistake. If anyone in this room wishes Selene harm, Inquisitor, it's that elf. She certainly has reason. <sighs> Be as discreet as possible. I detest the game, but if we do not play it well, our enemies will make us look like villains. We're keeping the court waiting, Inquisitor. Shall we? Is that the Inquisitor? An ox! Impossible! That's not the Inquisitor. It's just somebody's pet. Court approval. Our legions consider Kunari little better than ogres. You will have to work extremely hard to win them over. Oh good, that's great. I'm up to 25 out of 100. What a great place to start. It's funny, that guy said that he was, uh, he said he detests the game. That actually addressed one of my questions I was having during the cutscene, which is that it's, uh, I'm a little surprised to see an Orlesian with all the silly masks and clothes and everything actually just sort of unshaven. And it kind of suggests that beneath all that mask, he's just sort of foreign to this entire situation and would rather be separate from it. So we have a, what's that, we have a gem, a uh, quest mark over here. Oh, someone's ring. What's over here? Enter the palace. Over here we have unlocked the eastern storage. Anything else around here? On the other floor we have even gilded walls have ears. I don't know if there's anything else. It's a little hard to tell because there's no context for where the walls might be of that area. So, I think I might look at I might look into his codex entry since we unlocked something that might help us out a bit. Grand Duke Gaspar de Chalons. Lady Mantillion, I can offer no apology for my re my nephew's behavior the other night. Gaspard has never betrayed any interest in following my advice. In truth, everything he said to you at the dinner party, he also said to me. His resentment at being deprived of the throne has festered for some time, and he can never he was never one to accept defeat gracefully. I would take Gaspard's threats of war seriously. I do not believe my nephew knows how to resolve problems through the use of anything but steel. If his record on the battlefield is any indication, he is quite adept at doing so. So, I shall be increasing my personal guard directly. Sincerely, Duke Gretchen. Interesting. So, Mr. Gaspard is very war, ha war happy. There's this picture right by the way. You get to see a hint of him without a mask, I believe. Assuming that's him and not the source of the letter. I think that's him. Huh. He may not be... I don't know. This is a time of war, so maybe he is. He maybe he could be useful if he did take the throne... But he could also just be almost like a Loghain type. He could be a serious problem if he doesn't take the right, if he doesn't pick the right sides or doesn't agree with me. He might be a relatively hostile person to deal with. Since we're doing a story mission that takes place in the in the in Val Royale, we might as well read up on the town. So, Val Royale, <laughs> Val Royale. Any resident, a Royan, will say it is the greatest city in the world. Many take pride for such arrogance. But they do so through smiles as they nod in agreement. For, for such is the cost of doing business in the capital. Valoreal is in every way a world leader in commerce, culture, and its own exaggerated beauty. The site was, bo the site was founded during Evrion's grand unification. The result of a mix of influence not mu so much balanced as driven together. And while such an amalgamation would be cause for chaos elsewhere, the prosperity of the region has enabled an upward spiral of indulgence. The capital has endured the ages to become a beacon of civilization and its citizens the measure, the measure of modernity. Just ask them. Oh yeah, they would love to say that. Uh, an element of Val Royale is notoriously risque. And it, it exists... Uh, harmoniously besides the beside the aristocracy and the palace bureaucrats indeed the aristocracy uh, aristocracy wow for some reason aristocrat aristocracy aristocrat for some reason that word like I'm like I'm not exactly sure which syllables to stress there anyway the in, indeed the the aristocracy 
uh, tends to indulge in the city's darker side quite frequently, if discreetly, and that only adds to the mystique. Nobility elsewhere tends to be much more conservative and concerned about their reputation, even if a trip into the capital, even if it to, was it, even if a trip into the capital to indulge a few uh, private pleasures is not completely out of the question. Valoriao. In Valoriao, transgressions are suffered and forgiven with flamboyant urgency. There is not, that is not to say that the city is without lasting scandal or hardship, but one must squint past the gilding to be allowed to even a glimpse, as Royans are very careful about the, the face they present. Such it is with the masks of nobility and the underbelly of their streets. Except from Valrael, excess is grand and otherwise by formerly Sister Ladine. Oh, so she must have lost her title. Unfortunate. Anyway. Oh, weird. Updated codexes for Colin and Sarah. I wonder why that is. Really, I really wish the codex. Had, uh, I wish the codex menu was a little bit more. I don't know what to say. Like a uh, little more like email inboxy, just so it's easier to mark certain ones as red and not red manually. Because the moment you highlight one, it says it's red, and I'm like, oh, well, now I can't keep track of which ones I've been to before. Let's take a look over here. This was like something about a ring over here? Right, speak with a noble woman. Might be. Oh! Wait there! Whatever your name is, have you seen a ring? It is very important, and I need it back. It was a gift from the Countess Montbelliard, enchanted by the Fomari. I cannot go into the bowl without it. Is this ring particularly valuable? Its worth in coin is not as important as its social value. It was a gift from a member of the Council of Heralds. If she finds out I lost it, she will never forgive me. Not even if I live to be a thousand years old. That's a terrible predicament. If the Countess finds out, make her have mercy. Should you happen upon it, I beg you. Let me know. Oh, Jesus Christ, these people are already in suffer. Whoa! What's over here? Is it the ring? Did you, did, you drop the, did you drop the ring in a fountain? Oh, you silly woman. Surprise! Mika, what am I going to do if I cannot find my ring? Court approval, five. Oh, that wasn't very handy. <laughs> I was hoping for more than that. You just gain court approval, which is usually the result of finesse. Entertaining people or keeping up appearances, the higher court approval is the better. Is this the ring you were looking for? You are a treasure! I cannot believe you found it! You have saved me a lifetime of mortification. How can I thank you enough? Well, we're up to 30 out of 100. I get the feeling this is not going to be a completionist type thing. I probably can't necessarily make it all the way to 100, but I might as well take a look around, because I feel like public opinion and, uh... I get the feeling that public opinion is going to be a little bit important to the proceedings here if, if we have any sort of negotiation type situations. So, the best approval I can get, the better, especially since it looks like I'm going to have to make up for being a Kunari. Although no one has accosted me yet. What does this plaque say? Winter Palace, the Verkiel Fountain. Emperor Jugat Judashiel, I... Judish, judicial? Okay. Emperor, Emperor Judicial I commissioned this massive fountain to commemorate House Valmont's historic victory against Xavier Dracon. The four lions represent Emperor Alphonse, de Va Alphonse Valmont and his three younger brothers, Duke Isidore de Allens, uh, Duke Yvonne Saverin, and Duke Stéphane Velmonteguin. Montague. Montan. Like Champagne? Montaigne? Sure. Stefan, Duke, <laughs> Duke Stefan Val Montaigne. Let's just say that. So, took the fi who took the field against the usurper. Except from the art, uh, Architectural History of Orlais, Volume 1, by Elodie Fernel. This is very difficult for me as an American who is not exposed to certain... I can hardly believe Gaspar and Celine are in the same way. Grand Duchess Florian must have worked a miracle to get them here. There's a lot of uh, learning I have to do about pronunciation of different cultures, and this game borrows from several different ones, so it's not particularly easy. So I can go through that gate to proceed, or I can take a look around and look for opportunities to increase court approval, which is what I'm going to go for. 
Leading Nightingale makes them nervous. Talking about Leliana? Is Leliana here? I assume that most of the party, probably Josephine, Colin, and uh, Liliana are probably all here. I need Hala statuettes to open this door, apparently. Uh, to unlock, unlock the eastern storage, okay. Hala statuettes. So I just need to run around the environment while searching, I guess. Ooh, the Inquisitor was headed out of the Fade by Andresti. You can believe what you want. I'm not really even sure anymore at this point. Let's keep an eye out for some statuettes. Hello, friend. Oop. Is it? Is that it right here? That was fast. Oh, I need ten. Oh, Jesus Christ. That's gonna take fifteen years. Are all the Delonces here? Maker, I hope not. Let's go for a leisurely jog, trying to ping my map. Ooh, loot. Why? I don't mind if I do. Let's go ahead and steal things while we're here. That's always good practice, right? <laughs> All right. So let's, I might as, since I don't, since it's gonna take a while to find all ten statuettes anyway, I may as well head in the other direction with the hope of finding the uh, the other quest that I was looking into. What's this? Requires storage key. Okay. A simple key sounds easier than finding ten statuettes. I'll definitely say that. We'll take a look upstairs. Approach the talking nobles. This is a private conversation. Please leave. Find a safe spot to eavesdrop on the nobles' conversation. They didn't want to hear me. They didn't want to talk to me. How rude! Why you gotta be so rude to Canari? I'm only covered in red and look like a bull. There's nothing dangerous potentially about me, right? Mm. So I need to eavesdrop on them. Do I just hide behind a pillar? Oh, well this is pretty explicit. Any word from the front lines? My spies said the bodies were beyond counting. Surely the Empress will put an end to the war tonight. Pray, my friend. If the Maker does not hear us now, just pray. It's funny. I look at this guy's. I look at this guy's mustache. <laughs> I actually like. I like my character design. I'm pretty. I'm pretty happy with the way Vasty looks. But I got a comment on. I think part one or two of the series saying like that mustache is gonna make or break my decision of whether or not I continue watching the series. I'm like, well, I can't change that now. I'm in like 67 episodes in, and you're just now commenting like a month late. So too bad. Storage key. All right. So we have. We. I just found the key to the storage area downstairs, which is good. That's helpful compared to the uh, statuettes in particular. Take a quick look around and see what I find in here. There's a loot opportunity and something else is chiming behind me. Ring of critical damage. Oh, there's all sorts of stuff in here apparently. Alright. Secret correspondence. Oh. One out of three scandalous secrets. I can deliver my scandalous secrets to... I lost track of... It disappeared before I could finish reading it. Why do you do this to me? I'm trying to say things out loud for the audience, and you're always screwing this up for me. Is it here? No. Where is... Jeez, there's so many listings here. Is Val Royale listed here? No. Uh, Crestwood and Prix de Leon. None of these are Val Royale or Olay, are they? Oh! Was it the Winter Palace? Was that the secret? That's probably it. Hang on a second. Winter Palace. Great Black Man Hunt. Alright, discover- I need to deliver scandalous secrets to Leliana? Uh, scandalous secrets are everywhere in grand- in the Grand Masquerade. Uh, listen to- to- on conversations to gather gossip- gossip and scour the palace for incriminating items and notes. These secrets learned could be used to gain power for the Inquisition and upper hand in the grand- grand game of Orlesian society. Alright, so we need to look for whatever we can find. The Herd of Stone Hala. There's a veritable hero of Hala statuettes. Oh, herd of, of Hala statuettes scattered around the Winter Palace. They stand out a little too much to be simply decorative. I need to find ten of those to open that one door. So was there something else in here? I thought I chimed something else a moment ago. Oh! What is it? Oh, it's a Caprice coin. One out of fifteen Caprice coins. Jesus Christ, how many quests do we have to do in here? This might be... I might be here for a while. How do I open my... Oh yeah, journal. There we go. Uh, let's go ahead and mark one of these as my main quest so that I can... Just so it's easier to get here all the time, so... Oop. Accidentally closed my entire menu. God damn it. 
Scrolling down. Throwing away money. Okay. Orlesian nobles have been known to toss a priest coins into fountains as a symbol of status. Doing this may strengthen one's social standing. So I'm supposed to take a coin. I'm supposed to find 15 coins and then throw them into the fountain, apparently, to increase status here. Maybe people will. Is that what I need to do for people to like me? We can only hope Celine prevails tonight. Gaspar will ruin us all. I. Not sure if I necessarily disagree either. I'm not sure if I, how much I, how much faith we can have in a uh, Gaspard. He may be more trouble than he's worth. I'm a, okay. I'm a prank. Good. No. Turns out I have my own reasons for being here, but I'm not gonna tell you because you might be the assassin. Apparently, that woman's just walking around in circles, asking everyone that. Checking the fountain really quick for any potential coins, but I don't think there's anything left. So we're setting up a huge amount of collectibles, but I think I'm not going to find any of them until I go indoors, it would seem. See any other markings around here? Not really. Yeah, looks like anything else that's going to happen around here is going to happen inside. Alright. This is interesting. I don't know if there's going to be any combat here necessarily. So far it has the general feeling of, uh... At least the first half of the Kasumi quest for Mass Effect 2, the DLC one. So a lot of you probably never, might have never played it if you didn't buy the DLC. Inquisitor, a moment, if you please. I must warn you before you go inside. How you speak to the court is a matter of life and death. It is no simple matter of etiquette and protocol. Every word, every gesture is measured and evaluated for weakness. And they sound delightful. I'm shocked we haven't invited the court to dinner at Skyhold. The game is like wicked grace played to the death. You must never reveal your cards. When you meet the Empress, the eyes of the entire court will be upon you. You are safer in the Fade with the Firdiman. You're just full of joy and light this evening. Everything will be fine. Andraste, watch over us all. It's funny, surviving this little uh, foray into Orle with uh, Josephine will actually be probably pretty decent setup for our impending... Because I, I think I've chosen to romance her in this playthrough at this point, so... It's actually kind of decent setup that I had that flirty moment, then I help her with her personal quest a little bit. We did this whole thing with her where I need her help to su survive, potentially. Go on to her personal quest more, and then maybe a romance scene happens. Actually kind of plays out like a story arc in a more cohesive way than you'd expect from such an open-world, non-linear game. <laughs>